Hi everyone, welcome back to the First Time Gardener series. Today I'm going to show you how to control and prevent fungus gnats, the bane of every gardener's existence when you're growing indoors. Now a lot of people let fungus gnats stop them from growing inside because they're so pesky, they fly around the house, they get into your plants and they eat away at the roots. If you've never had fungus gnats, you're lucky, but let me just show you uh, what they look like here. We're going to talk about this solution in just a moment, but you can see here there's a whole bunch of little fungus gnats here on this sticky trap. If they weren't on the sticky trap, they'd be in my soil, eating away at the roots, or flying up in my face when I come in to water the plants. So let's jump into the video. Now what am I doing with this boiling water? Well, the first way to control and prevent fungus gnats in your seedlings is by starting with sterile seed starting mix. Now why is that important? Well, the adult fungus gnats lay eggs in soil, and if, you, if those eggs hatch, then they become a really big problem for your indoor seedlings. So you want to start with sterile mix first. Now, don't bring garden soil in from the outdoors when you're growing your seedlings because a lot of times they can be infested with gnats. But you can sterilize your soil by pouring boiling water into your seed starting mix. That will kill the fungus gnat eggs that might be in the soil. And it'll be starting off with a nice sterile soil. So you want to do this and then wait till your soil cools down before you plant your seeds. But this will really help you control and prevent those fungus gnats when you're growing indoors. Now this is my DIY seed starting mix, which has coca core, vermiculite, and worm castings. And fungus gnats don't thrive quite as much in coca core as they do in peat moss. So that's one reason why I really do like using coca core in my mix. Now it is important to sterilize your potting mix or your seed starting mix, especially when you're bringing home bags from the garden center because the fungus gnat larvae can get inside those bags and unknowingly you can bring them into your house. So definitely do this in that case. Now if you're like me, whenever your plants start to wilt or something looks a little bit off, you rush to water. You overlove your plants by watering too much. But you only want to water when your plants actually need it. And here's what to look for. And we're going to cover watering in more depth on next week's video. But take a look at the top of the soil here. See how it's a light brown color? That indicates that the top is drying out. But you want to wait maybe another day or so where the first couple inches of the soil dry out so it doesn't get overly moist and encourage the fungus gnats to lay their eggs. So once you've determined that your plant actually needs water, you want to water from the bottom. You don't want to water on the top and splash any fungus that the fungus gnats are dealing with on the top of the soil from plant to plant. So you just pour some water into the bottom of the tray here and then let it sit for maybe 15 or 20 minutes till the top of the soil here turns a nice darker brown color, which indicates that your plant has enough water. You don't want to leave standing water in the trays because that can also breed disease. And it's another, again, it's another moist environment for the fungus gnats to breed. Now, what the heck am I going to do with this? Apple cider vinegar and dish soap? What in the world does that have to do with fungus gnats? Well, we're going to make ourselves some DIY fungus gnat traps so that when you do get those occasional fungus gnats, you are armed and ready for them. So what we're going to do is make our little traps with apple cider vinegar. And I've got some canning jar lids and some bottle caps. So any type of apple cider vinegar uh, will work. It doesn't really matter if it's raw, unfiltered, organic, anything will work. They're attracted to the smell. So our house is going to smell like uh, apple cider vinegar. So we're going to pour some into these bottle caps here. And then what we're going to do is put a couple little drops of dish soap in each bottle cap. And what happens is the fungus gnats are attracted to the smell of the apple cider vinegar and they go to the traps. When they get in the dish soap in there and the apple cider vinegar, they can't get out and they drown. So we place these around our plants, around our grow lights, around our house plants, and that way when they do come around, you're ready. Number four for control and prevention of fungus gnats is neem oil. You definitely want to keep this in your garden tool bag. Neem oil is organic. It's oil that comes from the neem tree and it controls the chewing and sucking in insects, which fungus gnats definitely fall into that category. Now to help prevent fungus gnats, what I like to do is spray neem oil on the top of the soil. You can do this before you plant your seeds too. 
And you can also spray your little seedlings with it here, especially if you see any fungus gnats. But once every couple of weeks works for prevention. And if you do get some fungus gnats coming in on your little seedlings, you want to spray it every three to five days because that's about the life cycle of those little boogers. And that way it disrupts their life cycle and keeps them from chewing on your plants. I'm using the Bonide Neem Oil Concentrate. You only need about a fourth of a teaspoon, the 16 ounce spray bottle. But follow the directions on the back of the package for whatever size spray bottle you have. And I'll put all the links in the video description. Number five and one of my favorites is these sticky traps. These things are amazing. When you do get those occasional fungus gnats flying around your plants, what they do is they stick to these little traps. They're actually attracted to the color yellow. And these look kind of cute in your plants as well. They come in all kinds of different shapes. And you put, just put them around your seedlings. And then they stick to them and they can't get off, kind of like they are right here. So now you have five quick, simple, inexpensive things in your tool belt to help you prevent and control fungus gnats when you're growing indoors. Sterilize your soil, your watering method, your DIY traps with apple cider vinegar, neem oil, and your sticky traps. So make sure you use all five of these and nothing is going to stop you from growing your seedlings indoors. Definitely not those fungus gnats. And don't forget about the giveaway we have going on right now for a hose link, retractable hose, and a signed copy of my book, The First Time Gardener Raised Back Gardening. There's still a few more days left to enter. Go back and watch our video, 10 years on YouTube for all the entry details. You can also enter over at hoselink.com forward slash win. And this week I'm offering 25% off everything over at CaliKimGardeningHome.com, including all 30 of my seed collections with the code CaliKim10 years. And that sale goes until Monday, February 28th. Make sure you come back on Monday on the 28th at noon Pacific time. Join us on our live stream to see if you're a winner of the host link retractable reel. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.